I just spit. I hope my grandma never watches this. What's up? I'm Joelle. I'm Danielle. I'm Micah, and I have never made kimchi before. My family is half Chinese, half Korean, and growing up, both cultures definitely had a heavy impact on our upbringing. However, I never took the time to learn how to make some really fundamental Korean and Chinese dishes, and kimchi is undoubtedly one of the pinnacles of Korean cuisine. I decided to challenge my sisters on this wonderful learning experience. Each of us will be making our own kimchi without a recipe for the first time. And after we let it stew and ferment, my parents are gonna do a blind taste test and see which of our kimchis is the most accurate. To be honest, I'm not much of a cook in general. I would say that I'm a big frozen dumplings kind of person. In general, in the kitchen, I'm very comfortable. I love to cook for my family. I've I am not comfortable in the kitchen. <laughs> well, okay, I can make pasta. <laughs> so I know there is cabbage, which I salted for all of us. Gochujang. Red pepper flakes, which is the gochu garu. There are those baby shrimp thingies. Sugar. I think there's garlic. Fish sauce. <laughs> is that it? calling on the ancestors to come through. <laughs> I like how they're like these two measuring spoons as if I have any idea like how much of anything should go in there. I don't know, this is like a tablespoon. All I know about the kimchi preparation process is that it's effectively a paste that you make. And then you just rub all over the kimchi, you let it sit for like a week. I know that it's usually done in like big batches. Like I think normally, and in like Korean dramas, you see them doing it like pounds and pounds of cabbage. Even my grandma, when she would do it, I think she did it like for a huge batch at a time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a serving size is one tablespoon. So I'm gonna assume that I should use a whole tablespoon. Being able to make traditional Korean dishes is really important to me because I feel like growing up in a Asian American home, second slash third generation. It's definitely harder to connect with my cultural roots. Is because growing up in America, our parents are taught to assimilate. <laughs> so uh, it wasn't necessarily part of growing up to do some really key things that I think were probably more normal back in my parents' day. Is a teaspoon too much sugar? Uh, I would say that this is probably something I feel guilty not knowing how to do. <laughs> and that's it. So I'm mixing my three things together. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else goes in it. It's too thick. Ooh, he's chunky. I just spit. Dear God, what do I add? <laughs> I can see antennas from the shrimp, which is making me think that maybe I should have cut them up. Too late now. <laughs> now I'm just gonna add shrimp juice and not add the salt. It tastes too sweet. I think it needs salt. I think it needs this. Ew, 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 shrimp liquids. What? Okay, I'm putting in a tablespoon of shrimp sweat. <laughs> so now I think I'm just gonna shove it in there. I feel like, I hope my grandma never watches this video. This is my, um, you know, I just got it. This is my cabbage BB. Can you like hear it? <coughs> I feel like I'm like massaging a sea creature or something. This is my kimchi. So this is my final look. Stick her in the fridge and hope that it's not disgusting in a week. I am Chinese American. And I am 100% Korean ethnically. When I got married into my husband's Korean family, my mother-in-law was a very good cook and taught me how to make a lot of Korean dishes like kimchi. Good. Mm. Well, it's not good, but <laughs> it's not horrible. I'm going to clean my palate. I thought it was okay. Out of 10, what do you rate it? Three. I would say five. I'm going in for the second one. I'm afraid to taste the big piece. I just want a little piece. Mmm. I would almost say this might be the store-bought one because it's pretty good. It's very fermented, which I don't like. I like fresh kimchi the best. But I like it. I give it a, a eight. I give it a three. Mm. <laughs> Definitely got pieces too big. Too much... Uh, Sauce. <laughs> Texture looks like, um, it looks like Okay, that's it. not edible. <laughs> that is not good. Over salted and put way too much, I don't know, something. I sort of like it. Not edible. <laughs> what? I sort of like it. Oh, I love like salty. A, I would have to give that a zero out of 10. Sorry. Probably a six. I'm, I'm getting, looking for another small piece. This one is like so fresh and there's not enough salt, so it just tastes like cabbage. 
Yeah. A little light, yeah, light kimchi. Actually, the flavor's okay. It's very it's a little... bland. That fish sauce flavor is gone. I would eat it with some rice, so I'd give that a six. Three. It's just because we have very different tastes. The number two is Storbach. I would say Danielle did the least flavored, Micah and Joelle. That was my initial impression too. Well, I actually think that's Joelle, this is Danielle, this is Micah. Should I do it? Turn it over, yeah. Micah, Storbach, I'm two out of two. I'm three out of three, four out of four. Oh my gosh, Daddy got it. Thank yeah. you very much. People have very different opinions about what they like in terms of spiciness. You can't really say one is right or wrong. It's oh no, Jim. Your preference. <laughs> when you taste really good kimchi, you'll know it's good really good kimchi. Normally in making kimchi, everyone starts out salting the cabbage. They let the cabbage soak in the salt for about a minimum of five hours. Depending on how much salt you use, you'll rinse off all the cabbage and you'll make a paste that is composed of the red pepper flakes called gochukaro, baby salted shrimp, it's called sewujut, fish sauce, garlic, and ginger. Good job, girls. 